today I am heading into town because I have a business network meeting. I started doing them towards the end of last year and promised that I would keep going to them because this is a good thing when you work at home and you work on your own is to have that extra bit of outside contact with people in a similar situation to you. So here I am. It's uh, middle of January when I'm recording this. So I'm driving into town and I thought uh, that I would try and do a driving vlog. I've seen other people do these and I think it just breaks things up because at the moment it's just me in my flat, me occasionally walking about. So this just adds a little. So I'm going to see if this works. We'll see if the volume works. We'll see if just the setup in general works. So I'm going to have a little a little chat as I drive into town and we'll see how that turns out. This is again all experimentation. So let's head off. And see how this works. of things I'm going to talk about I think today. One is something that I read in the news first thing this morning which is about how people can't afford to live in their own towns anymore which I don't know which kind of makes me laugh because I haven't been able to afford to live in my own town for 30 years in fact When I moved out from home, when I first moved out, when I was 18, that instantly pushed me out of my hometown. Um, and the only time I've been able to live there again is when I've temporarily moved back home again, which I think has happened twice. I can't remember exactly. It's, it's been a long time. So that it happens now really isn't any surprise. The way house prices are, the way rental prices are. The example they used was a couple living in Cornwall, which of course is a, a really expensive area, but also a lot of their rentals have gone to holiday lets and it is the bane of nice coastal places that landlords will just want to take as much money as they can get their hands on. Where I am, or certainly for me at least, the rents are low compared to everywhere else. I would say that that's it, partly because I'm already a tenant and there's only so much they can push it up in one year. When my rent last went up, which was a few months ago, I did look to see what else was in the area. And the comparable price was going to cost me at least an extra 300 pounds a month. And I probably wouldn't be getting a better service, a better landlord, and I certainly wouldn't have been in a better area. I have the added problem that a lot of people have now, which is that because I'm self-employed, 
I don't have a, a paycheck to prove how much I earn every month. And I don't pass financial credit checks for landlords. The only reason I got the place I'm in now is because they agreed to forego the financial checks in return for me paying for the full six month tenancy up front. I'm now on one year tenancies, but I still have to pay every six months. And even after what is now five years, they, um, they still want that from me. And of course the landlord's laughing because he gets to bank it and keep the interest on top. If I, if I had to move, I probably wouldn't find somewhere else offering a similar service because in the past I've lost places due to my non-existent, apparently, financial setup. And that's despite me being able to prove that I have the money to pay this regularly. Apparently savings don't count because you could blow those in one go how you couldn't blow your paycheck in, in one weekend, I don't know. But for some reason that's an excuse. And I think a lot of it is because tenancy agencies and landlords don't want to hold on to that level of money in advance. Which I suppose in some ways I can, I can appreciate. The only way I could go back to living in my hometown was if I had nowhere else to live and I had to move back in with my parents which when you're approaching 50 is not an ideal setup although it's getting more and more common for older people to be moving back in with their elderly parents and whilst I know my parents wouldn't say no it's not ideal because what you know late 40s person wants to move back in with their parents because they can't afford to pull their own weight. It's just a horrible situation. So, yeah, not living in your hometown as standard. In fact, I live four and a half hours away from my hometown and I get to visit it four times a year. So there you go. This is modern life. I was also watching another YouTuber called What Vivi Did Next and I follow lots of channels like that. They've been inspirational for me because they prove that you don't have to be a professional to start your own vlog, which is just as well because look at what I'm doing. And she was talking about feeling kind of restless and I think it's, for her, it's because she's planning to move house this year. And it's all unknowns because the housing market's a mess, because prices are a mess. And she's talking about having to, probably have to move out of the area that she's lived in for a very long time because the prices are just ridiculous. But she lives in London, so ever thus. And I get that restlessness, I've been, I've now been here in the Northwest for eight years and thanks to various situations that I've been in over the years, on average I have moved and I mean, mean move regions, not move house. I've moved regions, I've moved areas on average every eight years and I am feeling that restlessness. But whereas before there had been very clear deciding factors which have encouraged my moves, relationship breakdowns, job changes, things like that, this time I don't have any of that. So I'm not sure what's going to cause this move. In the back of my mind, I think the most likely scenario is that the landlord decides to sell up the flats and I'm forced into a situation. But I don't know. 
what will be will be. I have no particular intention to move, although I would love to leave this area. I would love to go back south. It's where I'm from. I've never lived anywhere that I felt I could imagine living the rest of my life in. And I've lived in three or four different counties now. And I've never found a place that felt like home. I've never found what they call your tribe. And I think that's just because that's not me. That's not because, you know, there isn't a tribe for me. I think that's just because I'm, I'm very independent. I'm very individual. I'm very, I'm an introvert. I just get on with things and do it my own way. And I've never had the need to become part of a clan like that. So I've never found somewhere that gave me the kind of roots that stopped me from wanting to move. And even going back down south isn't because, oh look, my clan's down there. It's because that's where I'm from, it's because that's where my family is and it just makes life a lot easier if I was nearer. So maybe something will come along and push a situation that I can't avoid. And if it does, it does. I've, I've been used to moving around and things leaping up and changing my plans for me so often that I don't really worry about it anymore. What happens, happens. So, that's kind of where I am at the moment. And I think that kind of sums up the feeling early this year. And a lot of that, I think, has to do with the fact that it's winter, that we're all a bit restless, waiting for spring, that we're all hunkered down. There's another cold snap on its way. Ugh. So I think that might have something to do with it. I'm not looking forward to going into town today. It's cold out there, it's windy. I've got my windproof umbrella with me because apparently it's going to rain as well. <laughs> but forcing myself to get out of home and get out of town a bit more often is uh, part, of the, part of the game because working from home etc makes you ever so lazy and I think it's more mental laziness than physical because I'm not physically impaired in any way there's no excuse for me not to go out every day and you know I don't know do 10,000 steps or whatever it is but I don't and a lot of that is more a stagnation in my mind than anything because when it's really cold I just want to hide under a blanket and every winter I know it's coming. My creativity goes as the nights draw in. So I know I'm not gonna be making as much. I'm not gonna be as enthusiastic. I'm not going to be in the studio so much. And on the really cold days, you can't do anything because it's too cold. There's no heating on during the day. That's for the evenings only. So I'm not getting a lot done, which doesn't help. But that's the same cycle every year. And I, I, I allow for that. I work hard when the weather's good, when the seasons are good. I bank up my work so that winter is for selling, marketing, administration, all that sort of stuff. But it doesn't make it any less difficult to get through those long, dark days like it is today. So I've arrived at my park up, which is about 10 minutes out of town because I'm not paying for parking. Um, it's a place I know well, so I park here regularly when I do want to come into town and hopefully it won't rain. So I'll catch up with you later. I'm just walking back from my networking meeting. 
it's so good to get back out and meet up with people oh my goodness just hearing other people's experiences and just chatting about what it's like being in business working from home being self-employed you forget that there are so many people out there doing the same thing as you and dealing with the same problems so I feel energised <laughs> been really really good fun it's the day after my visit into town to my um, networking meeting and I just wanted to add something there is a lack of continuity it's much colder today so my dressing gown is on over my clothes because I want to keep warm um, we did a, a little exercise yesterday and we had to pick a word for the year for 2023 um, and I picked consistency because I'm really bad at keeping up on routines and good habits, especially when they're for my business. So consistency, um, introducing new ways of doing things into my life and sticking to it is a really key thing for me, I think, this year. I think this is going to be one of my challenges, like doing this vlog, consistency, keep doing it. Um, I had another word which I had written into my business blog, which was reassess. And I think they both work really well. So reassessing things and then being consistent with the changes, I think are going to really help me this year. Just get a bit more of a handle on the way I run my my small business of one from home. Um, and just give me a bit more structure. Because right now, the way things are, everything's up in the air. You never know from one day to the next what's going to be in the news, what's going to be affected, if that's going to affect your business or your income or your outgoings. Um, so to have a little bit of stability, at least in the routine, I think is really important and a really good thing to have. So that's my um, that's my summing up of my, my, my business networking meeting that I had the other day. And I've, I'm still feeling on a bit of a high from that. It's really nice to get out and mix with people and just get a bit more perspective on things and, and reinforce that, you know, some of the things I'm doing is what other people are doing and, and all the problems are the same. Anyway, I've waffled enough about that. So I, this was just, I just wanted to sum up that um, that recording that I've done so that it made a little bit more sense and I just didn't cut it off. So that's all for now.